Welcome back to the final part of the Mythic Tutorials for Starters playlist. This, uh, this tutorial we're going to be covering skills, or at least how to set them up. So what we're going to do when we're finally at the end of our mob here, we're going to type in a new thing called skills. Now there are different ways you can go about this. You can add the skill mechanic itself directly here, or we can make a meta skill. I'll explain that in a moment. Let's go ahead and just do a skill here. What I like doing, because it's fairly uh, straightforward, is we're going to do a damage skill. Here we're going to set the amount. Amount equals 1, uh, 2, just to make it obvious. At, this is going to be what, um, this is going to be considered a targeter. Any th this is always going to follow whatever skill you have going on here. If you have a meta skill, more than half the time you're going to go ahead and have it set to at self. But because we don't want it um, hurting itself, because that wouldn't really make much sense, we're going to go ahead and switch this to a different one that I like to use called Players in Radius. So P-I-R. Here you're going to want to use curly brackets. You're going to set the radius. R equals... We're going to go ahead and do 5. Next is going to be what's called your trigger. Triggers are basically what activates the skill whenever the instance happens to your mob. For example, if we were to do on damaged, this means every single time the mob took damage, it would also do damage to any player within a 5 block radius. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I am in god mode, I apologize. There we go. So whenever I hurt him, I take damage as well. This could be helpful if you have some sort of thorns, um, but we are not going to be covering what all damage can do. I'm going to go ahead and heal myself here. Do know that there are different types of triggers that you can use. You can do on damaged, you can do on attack, which is highly not recommended if you're using damage because uh, it will insta-kill you, because technically um, using a damage mechanic still counts as an attack, so I highly recommend not doing that. But, uh, another one that you will find most commonly, if not always used, is going to be on timer. I like doing a timer set of 20. So you're, um, one thing you're going to want to do, you're always going to want to capitalize the thing that follows the word on. On timer, capitalized. On damage, capitalized. On attack, capitalized. It's very, very important. And for anyone who might not know what this symbol is, all this is is the key that's right beside the one on your keyboard. You're going to want to press shift and then press that button. So next we're going to discuss what this, uh, this number is behind the timer. What this number is, is the amount of ticks that's going to pass by every time this skill is activated. Minecraft has an internal clock, which uses a thing called ticks. Every 20 ticks is equivalent to one second. So, since I have it set to 20 here, that means every second it's going to damage players in a radius of 5. If I set this to 40, that'd be 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, so on and so forth. We're going to go ahead and leave it at uh, 20. Next, there are various other things you can do as well. You can do, if you wanted to have a specific health value in which it uses this skill, you could do maybe greater than 1%. Or, actually, let's go ahead and do greater than 80%. This means, as long as the mob is above 80% health, it will use this mechanic every second, targeting players within a radius. It can get fairly complicated, so I don't really recommend messing with it too much. But, you know, of course, it's all up to you guys. So let me go ahead and get myself an axe here. Okay. So as long as it's above 80% damage, it's going to continue to use this mechanic. So what we're going to do here... Okay, 
So you can see, he's at 76 out of 100 health. Since he is now below the 80% threshold, he is no longer going to use this ability on me. This can be changed with equals, if you want something specific to happen at a uh, certain health limit. So you could do uh, at 80% he damages players, or if he's below 80% he starts using this skill. There are many different ways you can do it. And this does go, uh, this does work with any trigger as well. So if I were to do on damaged, um, let me heal, reload. Since he's below 80% health, he is now going to damage me. The last thing is going to be the chance modifier. This is, again, just like knockback resistance up here. This is how likely he is to use the ability whenever he, uh, takes damage when below the 80% health threshold. So we're going to go ahead and set it to 0 0.3 because it's fairly it's fairly low but still high enough to notice. So if I reload it, I'm going to heal myself. As you can see, he's not always going to do damage to me, but there's still a chance that he will. Let me go ahead and pull out my fist. So as you can see, only every once in a while, he's going to actually do damage to me. To recap, that's because, currently, he's set to only use his skill when below 80% health, and when he have, whenever he's damaged. Whenever he has these, um, these variables, or trigger and variable, whenever these are, you know, true, whenever it's the case, he only has a 30% chance to actually use it. As always mentioned before, you can make the percentage more specific, so like 35%, 36, 37, uh, 49, 53, you know, whatever you want it to be. If you don't have anything there, then it will always assume to use it 100% chance, for example. Because we don't have a chance modifier set, He's always going to use the ability when damaged, at least when he's below 80% health. You do not have to have a health modifier here. If you do not want to, you can have it set to where he only does it, uh, we'll do a 40% chance. Wow, I am very unlucky. No, something was not set up correct here. Let me reload in here. And now heal. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, I'm not always taking damage, but no matter what health he's at, he still has a 40% chance to use that ability. That's basically how you set up skills and how you can use them. As mentioned before, there are many different ways you can use them. Wow, I am lucky he did not kill me there. So I highly recommend looking at the manual, because like I said, there are many different things that go into it. If you want to see the overall gist of skills, there is a section called Skills Overview. Or if you just want to look at each individual thing, there's Targeters and Triggers. That's all I have for this tutorial playlist. I really hope this helped you guys out a bunch and cleared up any questions you may have and has helped you on your way to creating good, scary, mythic mobs. Or fun ones, or whatever you want them to be, of course. Now that you've watched all these tutorials, you should have the basic knowledge in order to set up your own custom mobs. Um, I do have other playlists, or not playlists, but other tutorials explaining how to use some of the mechanics. I'm still currently making those tutorials, but hopefully by sometime in the future when you're watching this, they will all be done and ready to be viewed. If you aren't sure how to use a mechanic, make sure to check out my other videos as there are plenty of them I cover and several ideas I give with them on how to use them. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope, I really hope it helps you out a lot. Um, if you like my tutorials, please consider donating as I will continue to make them and they will always be free as my promise to you. Good luck, have fun, and I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.